Hello, everybody. Welcome to Aprender Inglés con Resi Craig. It's episode 16. Episodio 16. How are you, Craig? I'm very well, thank you. It's been a huge week. It's been a huge week, you say. What have you been up to? Absolutely nothing. Been taking it <laughs> easy, kicking back, relajándome. What have you been up to? Have you been busy? I've been listening to our podcasts. Now that we've got them all in one place, it's really nice just to to, to go back and listen to previous episodes it's... and say... Did I really say that? <laughs> it's looking quite good. I'm quite pleased good, with the way the site's developing. I still have a lot of work to do on the on the web page, but I'm quite happy with with the way it's uh, it's looking. If you want to go to our website and listen to this podcast, and uh, well, obviously you are listening to this podcast, <laughs> but you can listen to all of our podcasts on inglespodcast.com from your mobile phone, tablet, laptop, or desktop. Craig, we have a comment from Carlos G. G? I don't know what the G is for. Jimenez, maybe? Carlos G. Sounds like a Carlos rapper. G. Are Carlos you a rapper, G. Carlos? Carlos G. Whoa, oh, you're hanging there. Uh, <laughs> Carlitos, Carlos, Charles, Carlos G, whatever your real name is. Uh, his message is, No podéis escribir la transcripción entera. Gracias a vosotros para todo. Un abrazo, Carlos. Un abrazo para ti, Carlos. Craig? Uh, yes. Uh, good question, Carlos. Thank you. Well, um, you've probably noticed that with the podcasts that we publish from our monthly Cuadano, that you can find at uh, mansioningleascuadano.net, we do transcribe everything that is said on the podcast. But with these podcasts, because of time restrictions, porque es que no hay bastantes horas en la semana, um, no escribimos todo lo que decimos, pero si sí ponemos las notas de episodio con los ejemplos que decimos, yo y Reza, y enlaces a recursos que podéis ir a ver, um, practicar más sobre los temas que, que hablamos. Entonces, sentimos mucho, es que no tenemos el tiempo para escribir todo lo que decimos. But thank you for your stars, Carlos. Carlos gave us five stars, cinco estrellas in iTunes, so thank you very much for that. We also received an email from Esther. Um, I don't know where Esther is from, but Esther asks about how to study for the Cambridge FCE exam. Any advice, Reza, for Esther? Well, for all people, I would say the ideal thing is to sign up for a class and go to a class. If you can afford it, if you have if the money. Afford it, if you've got yeah. the time, as well as, or instead of, but preferably as well as the class, you can check out the Cambridge website, which is cambridgeenglish.org. They've got lots of information about their exams and some practice material. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Yep, put a link. Also, you can buy practice books, exam practice books of past papers, that's previous exams, real exams, so you can see what the format will be like and uh, how many parts in each paper, how it's marked. You can even uh, buy an edition with a CD so you can do the listening. You can see the framework, el guion, for the speaking, etc. You can buy these books from Cambridge University Press. I think publish them, isn't that right? Yeah, you could probably get them on Amazon.es. Amazon. Yeah, just put in first certificate in English or FCE, Cambridge exam practice, and you'll see. And but it's, Craig, one thing. Uh, what about the change in the exam format? The exam's changing in 2015, so mm -hmm. there's no problem this year, but from next year, you should make sure that any textbook you buy or any CD or materials you get um, are up to date and are compatible with the new format of the exam, which will be changing next year. January 2015, they changed the format. I'm not, is it January? I'm not pretty sure. Well, yeah. they say, Kimberly say in 2015, so it could yeah. be in January. Yeah, well, you better check that. But I will put a link to the Cambridge website in the show notes. And also, we have a CD for sale on mansioningles.com that will give you practice for the exam 
if you have the level. Now it's very important to have the level before you start studying the technique for the exam and you can find out your level by taking our level test which is on our webpage as well at mansioningles.com. How much is the CD, Craig? 34 euros. That's a bargain. The only thing that is not on the CD is practice for the speaking paper, which is difficult to do if you're doing self-study. So um, a couple of things you can do. You can go to our YouTube channel, which is La Mention de l'Inglés on YouTube, and there are examples of students taking the FCE speaking test. And you can obviously go to an academy and sign up for a course and get practice speaking with a teacher. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Esther doesn't know, we, we should tell her that in the speaking exam, Esther, you will be speaking with another candidate. There must be two people, occasionally three, but minimum two students doing the speaking exam at the same time. You cannot do it on your own. That's right. Actually, one, one week we should try and grab two of our students and record them on the podcast doing an actual FCE speaking test. That will be interesting for our listeners. Moving on to Grammatica. This week, in direct speech. Is, um, is it similar to Spanish, the way that in English we report speech? I think it is more or less, isn't it? I think it's more or less the same. The tenses obviously change. For example, present simple changes to... Past simple. So if I say, I'm hungry, how would you report that? Craig said that he was hungry. So I am hungry. Craig said he was hungry. Present simple to past simple. What happens to present continuous? Well, it's got to go back to past continuous. Correct. So Reza's sitting opposite me now. So Craig said that Reza was sitting opposite to him. Present perfect simple. I've made the tea. Craig said that he had made the tea. So goes back to past perfect simple. Present perfect simple, past perfect simple. So that's simple. changing the have to had. Craig right. said he had made the tea. Yeah. Be careful, listeners, with your pronunciation. A lot of Spanish people mispronounce have and had. They're not the same. Present perfect continuous? That would go back to past perfect continuous. For example, I've been teaching English for 20 years. He said that he had been teaching English for 20 years. How long have you been teaching English for? For exactly 20 years. Really? Exactly. This so, year. so this podcast is offering 40 years of experience to our listeners. Yes, listeners. And a lot of grey hairs between I'm the feeling, pair of us. I'm feeling old. I really am feeling old. Past simple changes to? Past perfect. For example, I had a really bad day yesterday. Oh, trying to trick me, eh? I had, <laughs> Craig said that he had had. I haven't got a speech problem, listeners. I said had had, had which had. is the past perfect of to have. Had had, had a really bad day. Yesterday. Which is often, contra the first had is often contracted, isn't it? So you probably say, Craig said he'd had. That's H-E apostrophe D, right? Yes, he'd, he'd had. What about past perfect? Aha, you're still trying to trick me. Still trying to trick you. I would say no change because the past perfect is as far back in the past as you can go. Correct. So we can't make it any more past. So give me an example sentence. I had already had breakfast when you arrived this morning. The same. Craig said that he had already had breakfast when I arrived this morning. The mm. verb stays the same. And finally, past perfect continuous. Again, no change because it's past perfect. In this case, continuous rather than simple, but the same. And my example, I had already been teaching for five years when I came to Valencia. Craig said that he'd, he had, he'd already been teaching for five years when he came to Valencia. No change. When I say no change, I mean the verb. Of course, there are other things that we change. Like if Craig says I, and then 
it's me who reports what he says, then I say he. Yeah, so the pronoun changes. Yeah, Craig says, what, what do you say, Craig? I'd already been teaching for five years when I came to Valencia. So when I reported, I say, Craig said that he'd already been teaching for five years when he came to Valencia. And let's look at how modal verbs change, because when we report modal verbs, they, they often change. Not always, but some do. For example, will. Changes to would. Let me try to think of, it, of an example. I'll make the tea. Craig said he would make the tea. Very good. Can changes to could. Here's an example. Um, I can swim. Reza said that he could swim. Must changes to... Had to. Because must and have to are more or less the same. For obligation. So, for obligation. So when they go to the past, have to becomes had to. Also must becomes had to. I must get some more milk. Craig said he had to get some more milk. And may? What does may change to? May changes to might. I may go out this evening. He said that he might go out this evening. Right. And there are some modal verbs that do not change in reported speech. And they are could, would, should, might, and ought to. Can you give us an example sentence and I'll change it? I'll try to change it. Try if you, if you can. I could swim when I was younger. Right, no change of verb. Craig said that he could swim when he was younger. He said could, I said could, no change of verb. Right. I would go to Australia if I had the money. Craig said that he would go to Australia if he had the money. The only thing I'm changing is I to he. The verb, no change. You should learn to appreciate Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Craig said that I should learn to appreciate Mickey Mouse. And he's right. He's right. I have more appreciation for Tom and Jerry, I must admit. But Mickey's not bad. I might put on a Mickey Mouse video after this podcast. Oh. Craig said that he might put on a Mickey Mouse video after this podcast. And you ought to give us five stars on iTunes. Yes, that's right. Craig said that you ought to give us five stars on iTunes. Craig. Yes. Craig, yes. up to now we've been talking about how verbs change to go back in time. So present simple goes to past simple, past simple goes to past perfect, etc. Is that always true? Well, I'm just thinking about that. When the reporting verb is present, in other words, if I, if I say to you, he says that, instead of he said that, he says that, then the verb tense doesn't change, right? Can you... Give me an example sentence and I'll do it in reported speech. Um, uh, what, what are you doing after the podcast? Craig is asking me, is asking me, that's present continuous, what I am doing after the podcast. Ah, I present see. continuous in the original sentence and present continuous in the reported sentence. Because the reporting verb, Craig is asking, it's present, it's not past. But imagine, imagine, listeners, I said, Craig asked me, then I changed the verb. Craig asked me what I was doing after the podcast. Right. Then I have to change. So only if the reporting verb is past, and it usually is, then you change the tense of the verb. But if the reporting verb, say, ask, etc., is present, you don't change the tense of the verb but it's yeah i mean it's generally true but i hear sometimes uh, exceptions to that for example you're watching the television and a politician says we're going to reduce taxes for example and the reporter says the prime minister said today that the government are going to reduce taxes so it i think Maybe it's connected more to the immediacy of the quote and the reported yeah. speech. Yeah. How much time has passed between what is said and what is reported. Yeah. So it's not black and white. It's not a hard and fast rule, yeah. but as a general guide. And also for things which don't change or can't change or are permanent, don't change the verb tense. For example... Uh, I know you know this, listeners, but 
The sun rises in the east. Uh, we could say Reza said that the sun rises in the east. Rises present. I'm not changing it, it to past. It always rises. Because it always it's rises. It's always true. It doesn't matter when I said it. It doesn't matter if I said it 50 mm. years ago. Still, the sun rises in the east. So we don't need to change that verb, rises. Yeah. We just keep it present because it's always true. There's no, ch- no change. That's a good point. And also, expressions of time sometimes change in reported speech if reported on a different day or if there's more of a distance in time between what's said and what's reported. For example, this evening or this morning is uh, changes to that, that, this changes to that, this evening, that Can you say a sentence, Craig, with that and Um, report it? This evening, I'm going to a disco. Craig said that that evening he was going to a disco. Right. Today changes to that day. So, for example, uh, today I'm playing football. Craig said that that day he was playing football. These days changes to... Those days. We spend a lot of money on food these days. Craig said that we spent a lot of money on food those days. Now changes to... Then. For example... Now I'm learning Spanish. Craig said that he was learning Spanish then. Good. Absolutely. Um, A week ago, for example? A week before or a week earlier? We went to a pub quiz a week ago. He said that they had gone to a pub quiz a week earlier or a week before. Very good. Um, Ah, no, I made a mistake. No, you didn't. They had gone. Isn't that better to say they had been? Ah, yeah. It is. Uh, yeah. Let's do it again. Okay. A week ago changes to a week before. So, or a week earlier. Or a week earlier. For example, we went to a pub quiz a week ago. Craig said that they had been to a pub quiz a week before or a week earlier. No, it will be they had gone. They had gone. They had been to... Oh. Not have been, they had gone. We They've went. Gone. Went is the past of go. I know, but is there, is there not that thing of if you if you go and come back, then you change it to been? I was I, it just so happens I was doing this in class a couple of days ago. Yeah, they've been to. For example, have you ever been to Disneyland? Not have you ever gone? People say it, but it's wrong. You should say, yeah, "Have yeah, you ever yeah, been?" Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're because right. where's John? He's not here now because he's gone he's to the, gone shops. To the he's shops. He's at the shops yeah. now. You're right. You're right. Yeah. But I have been to the shops many times, but I'm not there now. Yeah. yeah. It's well, been, isn't it? Last weekend changes to? The weekend before last or the previous weekend. Last weekend, for example, last weekend we had a party. Craig said that the previous weekend they had had a party. Here changes to? There. What are you doing here? Craig asked what I was doing there. And next week changes to? The following week. We will release another podcast next week. Craig said that we would release another podcast the following week. And finally, tomorrow. That's the next day or the following day. The sun will come out tomorrow. (laughs) Craig said that the sun would come out the next day or the following day. Or the following day. You can um, study more reported speech on our website, mansioningles.com, and I will put the link to the reported speech exercises in the show notes. Can I just say one more thing, Craig? It's good that the listeners learn the grammar, but of course in real life people don't always follow it. True. And uh, listeners should be aware of this. Past simple changes to past perfect when we say said or asked when the reporting verb is passed. In theory, yeah. But in reality, sometimes people don't change, do they? I no. mean, for example, it's not uncommon for you to hear that if I say, I, I was happy last night at the party. I was happy last night at the party. People might report this as Reza said that he was happy last night at the party now it's maybe more correct to say Reza said that he had been 
happy at the party, but people will often keep past simple as past simple. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. In real so, life. Uh, take it with a pinch of salt. Can you say that in Spanish? Tomelo con un, un puñazo de... No, no, no. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Take it with a pinch of salt. No. It's usually true, yeah. but not always. There are exceptions yeah. to the grammar. <laughs> Moving on to vocabulary corner. And this episode, I thought we could look at some differences between British and American English. Do you feel like doing some accents, Reza? I sure do, boy. You sure what do, you boy? got, boy? What you got down the bio? Well, I've got some trousers for you. Pantalones. You got some pants, y'all. Pants, yeah. Pants, American <laughs> English. Uh, Americans say pants for trousers, which is really confusing because pants in British English are... Underpants. Under, underwear. Underwear, yeah. Um How do you say waistcoat in American English? Chaleco. Waistcoat. I, I'd be honest and tell you, I don't know, Craig. Vest. Oh, really? Yep. Because for me, vest is something entirely different. A vest in British English you wear under your shirt. It's an undershirt, but in American English it means chaleco. And vest in British English, camiseta, is an undershirt oh, in American I would English. never use that word undershirt. Ne- well, we're not American, so we wouldn't, would we? Tights, if you're a lady. Medias in American English. Pantyhose. 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 Yeah, Pantyhose. I gotta do the accent. And if you have a baby, you probably use nappies. Pañal, pañales in American English. Diapers. Diapers. Diapers for babies. And uh, bragas in Spanish. In British English, bragas are knickers. And in American English. Panties? Panties? Panties. <laughs> Craig, do you think we've gone far enough for this vocabulary? I'm afraid to go any further. I don't think we can go any We've gone as far as we can go. Or we're going to get an X rating again. We can't go further than panties. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and on, on, the, on the same um, topic of underwear, calzoncillos, pants. And that's for men. Oh, I said this before, didn't I? Pants, um, in American English, underpants. 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 Any, any comments? Yeah, I suppose a lot of our listeners probably prefer the American version. Not all of our listeners, but those in South America South, are probably yeah. more used to American English. Central and South America, yeah. Mm-hmm. Our, our listeners from, from over there would probably be studying American, North American English. Yeah. But our European friends um, in the Spanish Peninsula will be studying probably British English. <laughs> Moving on, I'm going to test Reza's Spanish in our phrasal verb section. I'm going to say a verb in my horrible Spanish accent and hopefully Reza will give us the phrasal verb in English and an example sentence. Are you up for this? I am, yeah. By the way, your accent's not horrible, Craig. It's an authentic Costa Blanca accent. A A London Cockney Costa Blanca. Blanca. White Coast accent. Yeah, a a White Coast Cockney accent from London. And I've got an authentic Andalus Belfast accent. (laughs) Salamanca. <laughs> With a bit of Salamanca. With a bit yeah. of Salamanca yeah. thrown in. Um, para hacerse a alguien. Take after. Yeah. Para hacerse a alguien. Take after. Can you think of an example? Who do you take after in your family? I take after my mum quite a lot. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of her personality in me. I take after my dad more, I think, in some respects. Physically or? Both. Your character. In, okay. in fact, my sister said uh, the other week, I'm visiting my sister, and she said, my hands look exactly like the hands my dad had when he was my age. Oh. Very strange. So she reckons I take after him. So to take after, para hacerse a alguien. And is your dad good with his hands? Uh, no, not really. Okay. He usually breaks what he tries to okay. repair. What he tries to repair. Alejarse. That's go away, isn't it? Usually on Valentine's Day, and it happened to me this Valentine's Day, when I approach 
a young woman who they you fan- who you fancy who I fancy, they usually tell me to go away very quickly. Go go away. <laughs> Wait, alejarme. I years ago in in the UK I was in a disco a discotheque and I asked a girl to dance and um, you know I'm I'm used to being refused but she said to me go away you're ugly and I've never for, I think I was twenty twenty one at the time I've never forgotten that. I asked if she'd like to dance or if I could buy her a drink and she looked at me and said, go away, you're ugly. God, you should have said to her, Craig, I may be ugly, but I'm very rich. She might have asked you to come back. I said, I've got the perfect face for podcasting. (laughs) Levantarse. Get up. Yeah. What time do you get up in the morning? Are you asking me? Yes. It depends. It depends what day of the week it is. Depends when I have a class. Okay. I get up for my students. I do anything for my students, Craig. I know. You get up, you do... Yeah. yeah. What time do you get up on Sunday? Uh, whenever I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't set the alarm clock. And you? I usually get up before nine on Sunday. I like to lay in and stay in bed for a while. But I'm usually, I am usually get up fairly early, about 8 or 8.30. Mm. Uh, levantarse. Oh, we just had that. Sentarse. Sit down. Sit down. Please sit down. Have a seat. Please sit down. Salir. Go out. Are you going out this week? Anywhere? I have no plans. And you? No. No plans. Oh, tomorrow, maybe I'll go out and see a film. I want to see that new film with um, Leonardo DiCaprio about Wall Street. Oh, the... What's it called? The 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 Wolf Wolf of Wall Street. Wall Street. I've heard good things about it. So it's a bit long, about three hours. Three hours. But maybe I'll go out uh, tomorrow night and see that. Regresar. Go back or come back. Yeah. Example? The mother said to her son, you better come back early. Mm -hmm. Tienes que regresar pronto. Yeah. Next, llenar. Well, if it's a phrasal verb, fill in. Mm-hmm. It could also just be fill, which is not a phrasal verb, but as a phrasal verb, fill in. Like fill in a form, for yeah. example. Fill llenar in your name. el formulario. Exactly. Fill in the form. Fill in your name, fill in your, your email address. We've had this one before. Cuidarse. Look after. Look after. Look after my plants while I'm on holiday. Can you look after my dog? <laughs> Despegar. Take off. We've had this before as well. Yep. What time does the plane take off? And finally, despertarse. Wake up. Wake up. And what is la desperta? That is the wake up firework um, that they throw outside your flat during fires, which is coming up soon. And we should really maybe speak about that in our next episode yeah. and release that roundabout fires time. Yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, listeners, if you're interested, Google or look up the word desper- desperta. It's a Valencian word, and you'll see what it's all about. The the noisy waking up of people in the morning in Fayas in Valencia. And we'll speak about we'll speak more about Fayas for our listeners overseas in in Central and South America may be interested in the Valencia Fayas Festival. So we'll have a special Fias section on our next uh, episode in our next episode and if any of those listeners in Central and South America would like to email us and tell us about your local festival we'd be very interested we would we might even incorporate it into a podcast and talk about it in English and you can send us your emails or your sound files mensajes de voz en mp3 with a comment a question some information about your local festival and send them to Craig arroba inglespodcast.com or to Reza at belfastreza arroba gmail.com and don't forget please to give us a report or a review on iTunes and uh, maybe a few stars if you enjoy our podcasts thank you very much for listening thank you to Reza and we'll see you in the next episode bye The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. Licensed by Creative Commons 
under a BYNC license at ccmixter.org.